Well, the idea is to talk about uh, the new platform of Medicontour, the trifocal lens Liberty, and see all about uh, the clinical evidence, uh, the visualization in optical vent in 3D. This is our finance disclosure in the last year. And well, the idea of, uh, of convert the platform Liberty on a trifocal lens is based on, in the patent of the optical profile with an elevated phase shift that is patented uh, by Medicontour. I think this is the key to understand adequately what is uh, the adequate uh, performance of this lens is based on that. That is very simple to understand. The, the key of this lens is not losing any distribution for far and for near, and also have now an intermediate uh, vision. At the, at the beginning, you, you can understand what is the reason, but when you see exactly the profile of the pattern, you can see here that uh, we have here the profile the profile of the diffractic uh, pattern that is not modified, we have a uh, elevate of the central uh, face, this elevate face shift on the central that is going to have this intermediate uh, focus. We have here the MTF with 50 lines per millimeter. We have in black what is the bifocal before, the, this lens and we have now the trifocal with the elevated phase shift, we have exactly, practically the same for far distribution of light and for near. I, and we have an Im, improve on the intermediate focus with this elevated phase uh, shift in this uh, lens. And what it's idea that in our experience this lens has converted in balancing light to the patient's uh, needs is the in our opinion, the best option in trifocal lens for our patient, whatever they need uh, in this uh, situation. We know uh, in photopic pupil that uh, because of the reflex on, of convergence and accommodation, we are going to have in reading task a uh, reduce of the pupil. We have here uh, the mean of the pupil. We know that uh, this pupil is going to depend on the age, so the older is the patient is going to reduce, and we're going to have a main pupil photopic of 3.25 millimeter. The 90% of the patient, as you can see here, they are going to have pupil less than 3.25 millimeter, and the older the patient, the reduce is going to be the, the pupil. So what is the behavior of this lens in this pupil? until 3.25. We are going to have here this distribution for far and this distribution for near and this distribution for intermediate. When we compare this distribution of light with another light, we have here the liberty for this pupil and we have here the fine vision for this pupil and we compare this distribution, the black light is uh, equal uh, distribution above is better for liberty, a below is better for fine vision, we know that for this pupil of reading condition, we have better distribution of liberty to fine vision for far and also for near. When we compare with another uh, lens, Panoptis and Atelisa, for this pupil for reading, we have also a better performance for near and also for far, and in comparison with Atelisa, this, this pupil for reading distance and increase improve of the distribution. So in condition of reading with this pupil, we are going to have more distribution of liberty for reading for near vision in comparison with fine vision, atelisan and panosti, the other trifocal lens. What happens when we have uh, needs for distance, for drive at night? We are going to have this mean pupil of mesopic around 4.25 millimeter and also we are going to see that it's going to reduce over the years. So this is more or less the medium of the pupil that we have in our clinic. So when we see this pupil, the distribution in night condition when they are uh, driving at night, 
We have a high distribution of liberty for fun, that is exactly what we want for our patient. And in comparison with Fine Vision, Fine Vision tried to do also the same. But what happened when we compare both lens? We have more distribution for FA in comparison liberty with the other uh, lens, with Fine Vision, that is pretty since the far vision in this mesopic uh, pupil for night driving. When we compare also with Panoptis, we have the same distribution for fun or liberty, and we compare it with Atelisa, we found exactly the same. So when we have this pupil for night driving, the liberty is going to give us, our patient, more distribution of light. But is this enough? Is this uh, light intensity distribution enough to know exactly what is the optical quality of the multifocal lens? Whereas we have another parameter, for example, the PCF, a PSF, excuse me. We have the comparison of the ideal distribution of the light with the far, the uh, near and intermediate. But even when we have the light intensity distribution of 100%, we can have different shape of the PCF. So we need more parameter. For example, the MTF in two dimension. In two dimension is the idea of in only in one plane, we have different multiple spatial frequency. So we are going to pass this object through the IO multifocality, and we are going to have what is the MTF that we have when this image pass and throw the, the lens. We are going to have different multiple spatial frequency. And also we have another parameter, very important, that we know in all the papers, is the MTFs through the focus. Here we have only one spatial frequency. Here, probably the 50 uh, per of millimeter, lens per, per millimeter. And we move this object through the RCL scanning, passing through the multifocality, and we have the MTF here through the focus that we saw in all the papers. But the idea is we could have these two parameters, the two-dimension MTF and also the through focus MTF, we have all the information that we need for each multifocal lens. And this is called the axial modulation transfer. We know from this paper, published in the journal Cataract Refractive Surgery in 2016, this concept of axial modulation transfer. We have here the defocus, we have here the spatial frequency, and the intensity of the color tells us the MTS of each lens. We have here, for example, a bifocal lens, and we are going to have here a trifocal lens with this focus for intermediate vision compared with the bifocal. What happened when we compare with the, this axial modulation transfer with the Liberty? For an aperture of three millimeter, that is typical for reading, we have here this uh, profile of axial modulation transfer of the Liberty. For you to do uh, easier, we can hear this line, the 50 uh, lines per millimeter, more or less, is 20, 40 in visual acuity, and um, more or less this line of 100 lines per millimeter is more or less the 2010 vision. And this is the contrast sensitivity. You know that MTF in optical band is more or less the same that the contrast sensitivity in clinic, but without the neurological process. Well, when we have meso, this mean pupil here that we have in the uh, in the clinical, we have here the, the focus curve measuring cotta sensitivity. We have here the measure of the axial MTF, and we have pairs these two peaks in the intermediate that is exactly that we are seeing these two peaks in the deep of focus of the far and the near uh, focusing. Well, let's go to compare the Liberty again with another uh, trifocal lens. We have here the vision, 2040 at 2020, and we compare exactly this focus in the axial MTF that we have comparing Liberty with fine vision. When we mix these two uh, axial MTF, you have here the color on green is better for Liberty, and the color on green is better for fine vision. You, you need to know exactly that the highest difference is only the one ten uh, percent, but we have here a better performance of our of uh, Liberty lens for far and also for near, and a little better 
in intermediate form fine vision, but not for all the spatial frequency because you can hear, you can see here a better performance in intermediate uh, for, for liberty. Let's go to see the differences. We can see here in LISA tree, we can see better per performance for near and for far then on liberty and also this spatial frequency better for liberty. And we can see here the panoptics, the intermediates for 80 centimeters is better in liberty, not only far and near, because the intermediate focus on panoptics is on 60 and probably 60 centimeters and probably is shorter on the intermediate. So the idea is, okay, I know that in the condition that our patient have for near and for distant, this pupil, the performance is better in liberty, more distribution and also more MTS. But is it enough the intermediate vision that we are going to give for our patient that we have seen? Well, when we go to the clinic, we can see here, this is our contrast sensitivity, the focus core, and this is our visual acuity, the focus core in binocular. In a room with this pupil, with this mean pupil of 3.32 millimeter, and this light of the room. We can see that the visual acuity in intermediate, we have at least 0.1 logmar is around 90% of vision in binocular in our patient is satisfactory enough for a normal patient. And what is about the extended deep of focus or near focus is this lens have more extended deep of focus on this near focus and we are going to see. You can see here the axial MTF of all these of this trifocal lens, but trying to see more clearly, trying to avoid the noise of uh, different uh, color, we are going to create a three hole in between of 0.3 and 0.4 MTF. Here is the useful MTF and we compare all these lenses. And when we compare, we focusing on the near focus, you can see that Liberty is going to give us not only the highest peak for the near focus, but also the height, the wide area on the near focus. So we are going to have a near focus with a deeper focus, uh, deeper focus uh, in for near. But what happened with this dark situation? The dark situation gives us the idea that we are going to have highest MTF for this focus. Let's put the focus here in this highest MTF. We see here that the Liberty is going to give us also the highest MTF for the far distance than the other, a little similar to the AT Lisa, but the highest peak. So you can see here a more area. And also, look at that, it's going to give us an incredible high level of MTF also for the near vision. This is the idea also that we have seen in the optical bank, we can see also in the clinical. Uh, performance. You, you can see here that we are going to have an incredible zero logma, it's 2020 for near in binocular uh, situation, but it's not only this peak on this focus. We are going to also have a deep and a wide uh, focus also in this situation. So uh, our patient is going to be able to see 2020 not only in one peak, but also in a wide range of near. And what is the advantage of the seven rings about the dysphotopsia? Because all of us know that all the people, all the company, try to reduce the dysphotopsia, reducing the distribution of the, of the near and reducing the addiction. This is the key for all the company. But can we reduce the dysphotopsia only with this situation? Do we need to avoid the near focus of our patient? You can see here a very, very interesting images, that is the simulation controlled uh, by the CMAX optics. When we have the, the, this photopsia is because of the near focus that is unfocusing on the far situation. So when we have only seven rings, we are going to have less noise for far, as you can see, in comparison that with other lenses that have rings in all the superfice, superfice of the, the lens. So this is the key probably to reduce our patient. When we create here a cut and we see from the uh, center, we can see here this profile of the potential a halo of optical bend 
And these only seven rings is creating less noise than other profiles that have rings in all the superfice of the superfice when we have big pupils with our patient and driving at night. So you can go in deep in evidence. We have published this paper on your left in the current night research. Another group very interesting have published in the European Journal of Ophthalmology all the details of uh, this lens. And in summary, in conclusion, this lens with that pattern of optical that elevated phase shift is a trifocal intraocular lens that we have going to give our patient the best performance at far and near distance according to the CMAX uh, simulation. We are going to have highly satisfactory intermediate vision with this profile of uh, luminescence and also the pupil is going to give us a balanced behavior according to the pupil and the task of our patient. And this seven rings technology is going to give us less out of focus intensity in order to reduce the dysphotopsia of the patient. Thank you very much for your attention.